Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. This is the week of March 14th, 2022, and we got a lot of stories for you this week. Uh, the first one is DJI released the Matrice 30, as we had mentioned last week, so we'll talk about all the details. Uh, it's quite an amazing drone, I have to say. Uh, we'll talk about the Mars mission that has a uh, drone flying up there on Mars. It's actually been extended against all odds. We'll talk about a man that was arrested for attempting to uh, do some smuggling using a drone, and, uh, and that didn't work really well. And we'll talk about uh, quite a few pieces of regulation that are going on right now, so we can uh, rope it into one uh, big, uh, piece at the end of this video. Uh, we'll also talk about a few events that we're going to be participating on and one that we just did and then we also have a new course out. So let's get to it. All right, the first big news this week is the Matrice 30 was released on Monday by DJI. Uh, this is something that actually has been kept pretty quiet. Uh, we always see new leaks about drones and uh, well, this one actually wasn't. Uh, my guess is that because this is more of a public safety drone than anything else, then this is not something that the general public typically uh, needs to get excited about. So there's no real leaks uh, out of it, but the Matrice 30 or M30 for short, uh, comes in two different modes. We have um, two different models, I should say. Uh, M30 and the M30T, T for thermal. Uh, the, uh, both of these come with a 48 megapixel half inch uh, CMOS sensor, uh, has the ability to do 5X or 16X using the optical zoom, and then up to 200X, that's right, 200X using a digital zoom. Uh, it's got a 12 uh, megapixel wide angle camera as well, so it's a dual camera system. Uh, it's got the ability to do 8K photos, uh, 4K 30 frame per second, and it also has a laser range finder, uh, which is uh, something that we saw on the Matrice 300. Now you may be wondering, what is a Matrice 30? What's the difference between a Matrice 300 or a 210? Well, a Matrice 30 is kind of like a hybrid between a Mavic Enterprise drone and a Matrice 300, a much larger Matrice. So it's a Matrice that folds uh, very much like a Mavic would. Uh, they did, a, I think, a great job finding kind of a form factor that fits right in between the two. The Matrice 300 is a fairly massive uh, drone, not easy to carry around. This is obviously geared towards first responders that need to get something off the ground very quickly. Uh, this also has the ability to do thermal. So the Matrice 30T has an external, uh, an additional 640 by 512 radiometric thermal camera uh, attached to it. So uh, the, the whole thing has, um, is rated IP55. It's got OQSync 3 Enterprise, which is a new version of OQSync that we haven't seen until now. Uh, 41 minutes of flight time, which I'm not surprised at all. Uh, we have the Mavic at 40 some minutes. We have the, uh, the Matrice 300 also at 40 some minutes. It's got quick recharge, which is cool. Uh, it has what's called local data mode, where all the data is kept local. Obviously something that uh, has been in the news quite a bit with DJI, uh, the fear of the data going outside of the drone. And then it's got uh, the um, emergency three propeller landing, like we saw in the Matrice 300, and it weights at 3.7 kilos. Think about about eight pounds, a little less than eight pounds. Uh, they also released a bunch of other things at the same time to go with the Matrice 30. Uh, they have a DJI uh, RC Plus. Uh, this is uh, the a new smart controller for enterprise drones. We kind of saw some previews of it in the past. It's To me, it's a mix between the, the Sendence controller, if you've ever seen this for the, for the Inspire 2, and the typical RC Pro that we've seen before. Uh, it's pretty big. It's got a lot of buttons on it, external buttons. Uh, it looks really cool to me. I, I like the smart controller concept, whether it was the hotel concept or the DJI concept. I think it's, it's cool to have not have to plug in anything. Uh, this actually has external power, so you can plug a battery. It has an internal battery as well, but you could swap batteries in case you start uh, running out of juice on very long missions. Uh, they also release a software called the DJI Fly Hub 2, this is used for flight planning. Uh, it's a docking station software as well because they also released the DJI Dock, which is a docking station for the Matrice 30. Uh, I mentioned that the Matrice 30 has the ability to recharge quickly. So this is what that station is for. It kind of covers the drone as it comes down, protects it from the element, recharges the drone, and it's able to go and fly again. Uh, and then the, the payload that's attached to it is the DJI Zenmuse H20N, which has the night vision, so that's a new payload payload that we haven't seen before. And uh, that gives you the ability to, well, see things at night, which is not something we've really seen on a, uh, on a drone at the moment, at least not commercially or easily available uh, like uh, it will be on the Matrice 30. So the price point was actually very surprising. I think they priced it the right way. I know it's not cheap. It's, uh, I think the, the base model is around $10,000 and fully equipped. 
you get around $14,000. So uh, this is the price point for Matrice 300 with no real other payload on top of it. So uh, I think uh, this is going to be a home run for DJI uh, as long as they can get past and, and sell it to public safety agencies that don't require the, the blue UAS. So think uh yeah that's all we'll put a link down to a drone excel they have a great article with a lot of specs and photos and everything i'm sure you've seen photos playing in the background as well so uh yeah that's the matrice 30 pretty excited all right the next thing this week is the uh the drone that's on the mars we've talked about this before ingenuity uh has been extended uh they, it's been doing a lot of flight missions on mars and uh it's actually accumulated 38 minutes of flight time so far it's uh, it's about a mavic 3 or an evo 2 battery uh, equivalent but that's on mars and it's traveled about three miles 2.9 miles uh, I don't think they were expecting any of this, quite frankly. This was supposed to be a couple flights and done, but uh, it looks like it's doing pretty well with the uh, atmosphere and with everything. So they're going to keep using it, I'm sure, uh, until they can't anymore. Uh, all these missions are focused on supporting the, the rover on the ground, Perseverance, and uh, it's providing rod assistance, it's uh, assessing different targets, and it's imaging uh, other features outside of the rover's reach. So I think this is cool. To me, th this is science fiction, quite frankly. Uh, it's exciting that we have the ability to record so much of that data and, and be able to see a different perspective that the rover on the ground can do. Uh, don't get me wrong, the rover is really cool, but having something flying up there is just amazing. Okay, last uh, story. We have another one after that, but this is a man in uh, Tennessee, Washington County, Tennessee, that was arrested uh, after flying a drone over a jail yard. Uh, and, and sadly, this is something that seems to happen on a regular basis uh, across the country every day. Uh, the drone was carrying a package that was wrapped in black electrical tape. Uh, the officers on the ground were actually able to capture the package and then uh, disconnected from the drone. And uh, in the process, it looks like the drone got caught up in the fishing line and then tangled the propellers and then it crashed. Uh, the package contained some illegal narcotics and oxycodone p uh, pills. So yeah, just don't be that guy, right? Okay. Last thing is uh, a couple of things, a lot of different things. Uh, first, we came back from, uh, I came back from a, a trip to Texas this weekend. It was a quick trip, but I went to the Texas Drone Workshop. We had several people presenting from Sparky Sorensen talking about video and videography at the high level. Uh, he, we also have uh, Ken Dono from Original Dobo who presented about real estate. We had Jared that talked about mapping. Uh, mapping 101 did a great presentation on that. We had Adrian talking about uh, thermography and then we had uh, Mr. Abel that was talking about uh, flying FPV and uh, and I made a presentation actually talking about airspace. I don't think I'm forgetting anyone. Anyway, it was great to meet everyone out there, see people that we've seen before, uh, see familiar faces. And, uh, and I hope we see more of these events across the country, something that's actually affordable for people to attend and actually learn skills that you wouldn't otherwise anywhere else. Uh, next bit is the Oregon State Park. We've talked about this for two weeks now. The deadline is coming to an end. So make sure, please, 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 that you go and submit your comments to the Oregon State Parks. Make sure that you go to the link down. There's an email that you can send your thoughts and tell them that the proposed regulation as it is, is okay. It is the best compromise for drone pilots and for everyone involved. If you want more information, please go back to last week where I gave a little bit more details about this. But uh, the more people we have submitting, the more chances we have of not uh, seeing restrictions in Oregon state parks or in state parks anywhere in the country. Speaking of restrictions, Washington State is talking about adding a drone registration to anyone who's going to fly for commercial purposes. So uh, not a good thing, not something that we'd like to see. I know the DSPA, the Drone Service Provider Alliance, is working on this. Uh, we will have more information on this next week, but I know they've been involved and they've been trying to talk uh, to, the, uh, to the state, making sure that this actually doesn't happen. And then lastly, talking about states doing uh, things that are weird with drones, we have New Jersey that is proposing a bill uh, that would... Uh, that would uh, that would force people to have geofencing on their drones so they can fly above 500 feet and they can fly within certain areas. The concept may sound good on paper, a terrible application. There is the, so many restrictions that would be applied that are absolutely unnecessary. Drones can fly over 500 feet in some situation. Drone can fly in certain areas also in certain situations. So that wouldn't really solve anything. Um, so uh, if you live in those states, please contact the Drone Service Provider Alliance as well. 
they have been working on this. Um, if you're not supporting the Drone Service Provider Alliance as well, please, please think about making a donation to them. They do a lot of work. This is a non-for-profit organization. Uh, Kenji and Vic and Scott, they all do a lot of work for free to help you and I uh, doing all these things. So please uh, head over to their website and uh, give them a kudos because these uh, these guys are doing a lot of things. Okay, I got two more things. I know this is a very long update this week, but there's a lot going on. We are going to be in Texas again on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of uh, next week. And then on Sunday night, we're gonna have a student meetup in the Austin area. If you want more information, go to our Facebook group, uh, the, uh, the student pilot uh, drone group, and then you'll see there, there is a, an event. Uh, we wanna meet with as many of you as possible. We, uh, we did that last year, it was a great success, so we wanna do that again. Uh, so make sure you head, uh, head over to get the details. And then lastly, we'll have the AUVSI exponential event that's happening on April 25 and 26. We will be in Orlando for that. And, uh, and uh, we'll put a link down in the description as well. Okay. Last thing this week is the Mavic 3 deep dive. It's out. It's ready to go. Make sure that you go and enroll. It's free. We'll show you how to fly the Mavic 3 and how to, uh, well, how to not crash it, uh, how to learn some tips that you can find in the user manual. Again, it's free, available on our website. Head over there and then uh, tell us what you think. So that's it. I know it was a long one. I'll see you guys next week. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, leave your comments, and I'll see you next week.